Hello and welcome to history class. I am your professor, Jennifer Hames, and I am talking to you today about the cult of true womanhood. This was a primary source. Um, many colleges across the country, this is one of the most popular historical primary sources that you will read. It's really important. You know, I would say most universities and most colleges actually read this. So I've taken this time to really break it down for you. Um, I have my copy and I'll have a copy for you to look over and you need to be reading through and um, understanding that as well. Um, but I thought this is a very dense um, reading. Um, Barbara Walter, Barbara, Barbara Walters, no, Barbara Welter was a historian. Um, she had a PhD from Wisconsin and she taught at Hunter College, I believe. We're gonna take a look at her because I want you to see a picture of her and see the woman behind this. Here she is, Barbara Welter. And um, she had a PhD in university, a PhD of from the university, I cannot talk today, from the University of Wisconsin in American history. All right, and she wrote this piece. Okay, let's go on to talk about it. So, um, the first thing you need to understand is this is, she collected um, primary sources uh, from sermons, from religious uh, books, um, and newspapers, and also um, from women's magazines. Now, who do you think wrote women's magazines from 1820 to 1860? Men did, not women, not women at all. Okay, and you'll see why after we take a look at this. Um, so this really came from the Victorian era. Your opener uh, talks about that. She looks at antebellum decades, but it really goes back a lot for, further to the Victorian age. In the Victorian age, uh, women were corsets that were tied very tight. It was all about being really super thin to the point that they almost hurt them. They, well, they did hurt themselves often and they fainted and they were looked at as the weaker sex. Um, and the only thing that mattered in their life was to marry. Well, that's it. Um, and to have children. And if they didn't, then they, it was a disaster and their life was doomed. Um, and this was the only thing. And you'll see that this is reiterated in this primary source. Okay, I told you where it was collected from. You need to understand that this is a false societal construct, all right? And your background information states that because of industrial capitalism and, and basically the industrial revolution, men needed to be freed up to work, okay? Where before women could work, you know, 1700s, before the 1700s, 1650s, around that era. Um, it was more of a partnership. It could be a partnership. Um, and we'll talk more about the American farm, uh, probably in class, if not here. Uh, but at this time, women were kind of shoved into a role um, for society to bolster capitalism. Now, it wasn't all women. Lower class women, immigrant women, obviously between 1820 and 1860, Slave women weren't even considered to be women because there is no way in the world that they could do any of this. All right. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, but poor women, lower class women, this was not put upon them. This was only for middle class and upper class women that these false societal constructs were put upon them. Now, I will also argue that I can take you to many places still in the U.S. Um, because this was a Victorian ideology that moved across the Atlantic Ocean and came to America, um, there are still places that believe this to a T, okay? Um, now, I also wanna talk about feminism. Now, please, hopefully we've talked about this in class before, feminism is not the hatred of men. I have three sons and I adore them, okay? Um, best things that have ever happened to me. Feminism is simply this, okay? And maybe you've been taught the wrong definition of feminism, Feminism is basically this, not being a doormat, taken advantage of, not treated, you know, um, without equality. Um, men can actually be feminists too. Um, my youngest was, I think he was seven years old when I was in grad school. And he said, mommy, can boys be feminists? And I said, I don't know, honey. So I, you know, went and asked my professors 
And they said, absolutely. Basically, a feminist would be for the equality of all, okay? No matter the color, the gender, just the equality um, and respect of all. Okay, so just so you know that, that that's not what it is, all right? That's not who we're talking about. Um, this is just, um, you know, sometimes the definition of feminism is really twisted and lied about. Okay, so this is really about a, st a sexual stereotype um, the ideal, you know, woman, um, I believe I also told you it's called the cult of domesticity sometimes as well. It talks about four virtues, piety, purity, submissiveness, and domestic, domestic, I'm going to mess it up, domestic, right? Domesticity. There, I said it perfectly. Say that three times fast. I will not. <laughs> um... So this was really about putting the women in a certain place to take care of children so that men could be freed up to make lots of wealth and their um, ideology of success. Okay, and then this also has uh, the ide ideology of success for women. All right, so the first thing I want to point out to you is I've probably talked about this in class. I may not have. I usually always do because it's really important as well. You have the private sphere and the public sphere, so you have these spheres that you can do analysis with. I'm going to turn down my volume so as not to have crazy noises. All right, there we go. So women were only supposed to be emotional. Um, they were supposed to be at home only with the kids, uh, cooking, cleaning. They could do church and they could read the Bible, but that was the only education that they were supposed to um, participate in. Um, over here you have the public sphere and the men could move back and forth or the husbands could move back and forth, but, um, women had to stay in their sphere. Okay. And again, we're talking about middle class and upper class women. So in the public sphere, uh, you have politics, men were, you know, they could be in the sphere. Women could not education, uh, you know, college thinking and logic, work, money, voting, um, and that sort of thing. And then men could move between the two spheres. So that's just helpful because uh, just a different way to look at it and analyze it in a different way. Woo! Okay. And again, these are false societal constructs. Okay. Um, and that's really important because, um, yeah, there are differences between men and women, but so many of them are just made up um, for society to, or people in power to, to, um, accomplish their goals. And here it's about uh, the Industrial Revolution. Okay, so we'll go ahead and look at this. Um, so the um, cult of true womanhood, this is what a true woman is supposed to be. And you're going to see at the end of her primary source and collection of data that there's a huge um, contradiction here. Um, and, and you'll see that, wait for that. Make sure that you're, you know, gathering all this information. And one reason that I'm, I'm walking you through these steps is because this is really kind of dense writing um, and kind of hard to read on your own. Um, uh, so I wanted to, to walk you through it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go through this. Okay, so these are stereotypes um, of the Victorian woman. Um, also, many of these are, um, poured over into, um, even today. I mean, um, definitely there's still some remnants. Okay. So a woman is supposed to be dependent like a child in the first, you know, couple paragraphs that you're reading. Um, and men are supposed to be independent. All right. Uh, women are not supposed to ask about money. They're not supposed to have anything to do with money. Um, and men are supposed to be materialistic money makers, you know, money equals success for a man. Um, women are not allowed to work, this middle class and upper class woman, um, and men are, you know, required to work and have a career and a purpose in life. Um, women, uh, usually were married very, very early. Okay. So that, and, and I hate to say this, but they were married early because the earlier they're married, the earlier they have a control, um, of a man over them. And back in this patriarchal time, um, and it can still be seen today, um, we've come a long way, but we're not there yet. Um, you know, they really believed that a woman needed to have a man 
over them, whether it's your father, brother, son, or husband. Okay. In fact, in the early 1900s in America for quite some time, there were coverture uh, laws, coverture laws, where um, if you married, um, your inheritance became your husband's. Anything you made was his, um, and you were covered by him. Uh, you were the silent citizen. Um, you didn't, you know, time you could not um, bring a case before court. Um, you couldn't divorce. Um, even if there was, um, you know, um, unfaithfulness or um, beating or even incest, you know, crazy things. Um, they would not let the woman um, divorce. Uh, they would allow the man and then the man would take the, take the um, children. Okay. So it was really, really um, very, very much um, put in boxes of of power okay so we're, so marrying early let's see so also um and men could marry much much later in life um and it was very normal to have like a much older husband kind of like instead of the companionate marriage and the partnership marriage that kind of came the ideas came along you know um, in the late 1800s, 1800s, um, this was more of a parent-child relationship where the husband was more of a parent and, and the uh, woman was more of a child. It was not equality at all. So um, the information she collected said that women were made for religion. Um, and if you weren't religious, then you were not a woman. Okay, not even, you couldn't be a woman if you were not religious. Um, that they needed to be a better Eve because um, a lot of historical information um, collected, you know, Eve is blamed for every wrong of the human race. All right, so she was supposed to be a better Eve. It was better to pray than to think. Don't even think, just pray. They shouldn't even try, okay. So for men, marrying later, they were too busy for religion. That's what your, you know, primary source is saying. Um, they weren't religious. Um, too busy for religion. They were not really made. They weren't the species made for religion. That was really a woman's gift. It was her gift. Okay. Um, and if you weren't religious, you were a normal man. That's it's fine. But you couldn't even be a woman if you weren't religious. All right. They were supposed to be very emotional. They were not ever supposed to be logical. In fact, they thought hysteria or extreme, you know, emotional states, um, was a disease and they did like tests on women to the point that they thought that it would be cured if they were married. Okay. Um, we know that hysteria is not just one gender. We know that that can happen. Yeah. Um, and men were supposed to, um, display no emotions and to have a hard kind of a cold heart. Okay. So this is this, this, uh, terrible stereotype, um, that our society has been built on is not just bad for women it's bad for men too okay and you need to you know think about that when you're responding to your discussion post or to your um reflection okay you need to think about both sides of that okay um women are supposed to judge themselves and they're supposed to judge other women to kind of keep them in their place um it doesn't even talk about men judging i mean they just they're just supposed to, if they're successful and wealthy then they're awesome and they don't really judge each other's character Money, success, career, um, and being able to control your family is really important. Church work is the only work they're supposed to do that won't corrupt them. Uh, men can dream. They can have a purpose and ambition, and women are not supposed to. Education is only for Bible reading. Um, the more knowledge or the more intellect you get for women, um, the information she collected said that the more destruction and the more destroyed you'd be. But that's not what they say for men. They say education, intellect, college, PhD, that all that's great. The only purpose a woman is supposed to have, she's not supposed to have any ambitions or dreams. Um, the only thing she's supposed to have is her two um, purposes in life are to be beautiful and useful. Wow. Ouch. I don't like that at all. Um, and men um, are just... They're supposed to be wealthy, have a good career, good job, be successful, 
be able to control their family and have, you know, have lots of money. And it's okay for them to be intelligent and won't, you know, lead them down an evil path, supposedly. Okay. What else did we miss? Oh, and they're not supposed to parent at all. That's the wife's job. Again, this is hurting, you know, men as well. You know, what about those, you know, loving fathers that want to parent? Society's telling them, no, you don't do that. You can't be emotional. You can't be loving and nurturing. You're not allowed to. And that's um, damaging as well. Okay. So I'm going to stop um, the, the um, video and I'm going to write a few more up here so that we get all of this in perspective. Okay, I'll be right back. Hi, we're back with the rest of um, The Cult of True Womanhood. Let me make sure microphone's working. Um, so we have some more that are, are listed and some more um, stereotypes that are listed. Um, I think the funniest one um, that I read, um, excuse me, was a professor uh, a woman asked about bloomers. She wanted to wear bloomers. I know um, some women want to like ride bicycles, that sort of thing. Bloomers are pants. Okay, really big puffy ones. But And the professor said that they were, if you wore bloomers, it would cause socialism, wild women, um, and there's a list of all kinds of horrible things that it would cause. Um, only a dress, no trousers. So we have, you know, um, no trousers and trousers over here, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, let's see. A woman's only happiness was, was marriage. Um, she had to be a virgin at, at, at her marriage, at her wedding, or um, no good man would um, marry her. And it was her only happiness in life. Um, they should be sub, uh, submissive, passive. You don't question, you don't think, you just accept your dilemma. Um, let's see. You're not to feel or act for yourself. You are inferior. Okay. The inferior sex and men are superior, um, was the false societal construct. And you were messing. And if you, if you disagreed with any of this or questioned any of this, you were messing with the order of the universe and asking basically for God's wrath, um, and the universe would just fall. Um, they needed to be timid, doubtful, perpetual children, and you would be cursed. Okay. All right. Let's see what else. So the four things that women were supposed to be were piety, purity, submission, to domesticity. Um, they were considered a little less than angels um, because God made them more religious um, and able to have self-control. And that's another thing. Um, if you've made one mistake um, and you succumb to passion uh, one time, um, you were considered a prostitute. So there was no in between. You were either a true woman or nothing. Um, so you had to be a virgin. Your only happiness, marriage. You'd be a fallen angel. Death would be better than to um, not be pure before marriage. Um, you're asking for madness and death. And there were lots and lots of books. Like there was one in, in the reading that said, um, a girl named Lucy, you know, succumbed to passion one time, had a baby and the baby died. And that's just what happened to girls that didn't listen to the universe. Uh, now they don't say anything that happens to men. Okay. And there is no consequence. And we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, so women were to dress modestly. Their largest power that a woman had was to tell a man no with his sexual advances. Um, but women were supposed to be passive in every other way. Like if a man was abusive, if you were married and, and your husband beat you, you're supposed to just not say anything. It was unfeminine and unnatural to want anything more or to question. Uh, women must save men, which this is so crazy because like if you know anything about mental health and psychology, um, you can only save yourself. You can't control anyone but yourself. You can control yourself. You can love and support other people, but you can't change anyone or save anyone. Uh, if a woman loves knowledge, um, she was considered a mental hermaphrodite, which is a huge, um, just a huge, just insult. Okay. Um, wow. Not a woman at all. Okay. So then you have the men's side, superior, they're, um, they're supposed to be pure, but it's just too hard for them. That's what it said. Um, they're sensual by nature. They can't help it. They can't help um, 
you know, advanced sexual advances. They can't say no. And we know that, that would not fly in a court system. Um, every person has a responsibility for their own actions. End of story. We know this. Okay. Um, they are in control of themselves. The only person we can control is ourself and that's it. Um, there was a horrible news story a few years ago and it was an eight year old who was raped by several, I think men in their twenties in Texas. And they said, well, she was dressing like a teenager and it was her fault. And you know, this is where all these societal lies really come together. It does not matter if someone is dressed in your opinion inappropriately. It causes nobody to make a wrong decision because they're in control of themselves. Um, women are told they're in control of themselves and then men are given this like free pass over here in the societal, this false societal construct. Um, and that's not good for our, our young men and boys and, and, and men in general, because they have a choice. Everyone has a choice and everyone is in control of their choices. Um, okay. So men are supposed to test girls. Yikes. Um, and then men, men are grateful if you say no, um, is what this, you know, all these, um, collection of primary sources are saying. Men need to be saved. They can't save themselves yet. They're supposed to be independent and more mature. This is weird. It does not fit with, you know, psychology or, you know, or the law. Books don't ruin men, but it does. It did say in your um, reading that women should not read too many novels because it can ruin them if they read the wrong ones. Um, let's see. I think I already said if men were abusive, a woman or wife is supposed to just be passive. Um, men are supposed to, you know, make a lot of money, think, be successful, be in politics. They're not supposed to parent. Um, they do not need God. Uh, men live in a naughty world and women need to save them. They're movers, doers, active and aggressive when women are supposed to be completely passive. Okay. All right. Let me see what else we have in here. That's pretty much the gist of it. And these are, remember, these are false societal constructs. Um, this isn't like true what we would think of today at all. Everyone's responsible for their own actions. Um, but this is kind of where it came from. You know, that patriarchal society and um, really was um, put into really strong um, societal constructs with the Industrial Revolution. Okay. Just trying to see if there's anything else. We went over all that. Went over all that. So at the end, what I wanted you to see, let me see if I left something out. Oh, I think I left this one out. Uh, women are supposed to obey. They're supposed to silent. Su they're supposed to silently suffer. They're never supposed to criticize. Um, they need to say yes to everything. They need to bring men back to God. Men can't save themselves. Uh, talks about how the women are the great guardian of society, and they're supposed to comfort uh, the comforter of their husband and be the nurse of their husband. And I think I told you before they only had two purposes in life: beauty and usefulness. Um, they're supposed to be uplifting and happy all the time. That is something, um, that really still kind of exists. Um, you know, you know, the, the quiet, um, girl that is always pretty all the time and smiling all the time and saying nothing. They were supposed to be, be they were supposed to be uplifting, happy, um, adornment of the universe. Um, they're supposed to do housework as their exercise. That was good enough exercise. And men, of course, could be wild. Men could be excessive. And they're humans that are passionate. Um, they're not supposed to do housework and just exercise. Okay, so what she gets to at the end, uh, there's a um, poem um, that she quotes. And then at the end, she says, you know, if women are a little less than angels, that they can say no. Um, they're supposed to say no, that they can um, have self-discipline self and men can't. If they are um, guardians of, you know, the universe, 
why aren't they in charge of ruling the world if they can say no when men can't? Um, so she just like takes all these things, these, um, just this list of being perfect. Basically this is, you need to be perfect or you're nothing or you're a prostitute and men, a bunch of excuses for men. Okay. And, um, you know, they can't, they're not disciplined enough, self-disciplined enough. And so she's saying, why aren't they running the world? If you read that last question. You know, if that's really what society says, which we know this is untrue. Okay. We know that these are not true. All right. Um, but it's just important for us to dig into those. All right. Um, so you're going to be asked um, several questions, but hopefully this helped you um, to understand um, the depth of a cult of true womanhood and, um, and to better understand what Barbara Wal Welter uh, was trying to convey. Remember, she did write this in um, 1966. And if you are history analysis words talk about um, how um, bottom up history began to start in the in the 60s, um, where almost all of history was taught from the top down, which would be we would only study elitists like George Washington or Queen, you know, Victoria or Queen Elizabeth. We never ever looked at the lives of, of people um, that were just normal. So then you have this cultural turn, this huge turn, and this is where the great history is um, when you're looking at normal people and, you know, what they face and what they did and their choices. So this is at the bottom up beginning of the bottom up uh, trend in the cultural turn. Something else I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, who does this not include? Um, well, 1860, 1820 to 1860, um, one of the, there were many sad, disturbing, horrific things about slavery. Um, you know, whether you want to talk about 66% of all slave girls were raped and molested, Lord knows what age. Um, they wouldn't let them read and write because they didn't want them to tell their stories. And many of the others lived in fear of someone doing that. Maybe they didn't, but they were just constantly afraid and it was uh, terrorizing. But another really awful thing about slavery is they did not allow slaves to marry. Um, so that's kind of one thing they did is defiance. Um, so it would break their hearts when, when a slave, when somebody was sold, um, into slavery, um, and they would lose a husband or a wife and they were actually married to two to three different people throughout their lifetime because they were removed from them. Um, so they tried to establish families as a protest against, um, white power. So, um, so they weren't even you know, this cult of true womanhood couldn't even be obtained by a slave woman. It wasn't even, so they weren't even considered a woman. Uh, also immigrant women, um, women of color, lower class, um, white women as well. Several groups were not even, um, looked at like they could be, um, uh, true woman. Um, it was really just a, a bar of perfection where women judged each other and judged themselves really, really, really harshly. Um, and perfectionism is a terrible hamster wheel to be on. Yikes. Uh, something else I wanted to talk about was uh, lower class women. Lower class women had horrible, terrible, hard lives um, with not enough, you, a lot of times to eat, not enough to... Um, live a life of ease. They worked extremely hard. You know, if you look at the beginning of the industrial revolution, especially women were paid so little and, and put in harm's way, children, even, um, child labor laws came along and that sort of thing. Women are still not paid the same in the United States. <clears throat> Although Iceland has made it, uh, something of public record, I believe last year or two years ago, where, um, women must be paid the same as men for the same job. So go Iceland. Um, but lower class women did have, um, the ability to marry later, um, the ability to choose who they wanted to marry. And they had, uh, they could work. They were allowed to work. Well, they had to work to, to live, to eat. Um, but their lives were much harder. 
um, too, but they had some more choice. It was the middle and upper class women that were really um, kind of boxed into a corner um, to this, you know, um, perfectionist um, ideology. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with the different um, questions that you'll be facing um, to answer. Um, and we've, you know, made a lot of charts and gone through a lot of things that Barbara Walter, Walter went over and found in her primary sources. Okay, thanks a lot. And that is the cult of true womanhood.